Hey, it's Jordan with the Young Turks, TYT Politics. I am here with Dr. Ben uh, Kurtman. You are an atmospheric scientist at the University of Miami. Um, I wanted to talk to you. Obviously, we're seeing the images uh, going on right now uh, in sure. Houston, Texas. Uh, now it's going into uh, Louisiana, uh, mm. and it might even go into Arkansas. Uh, it was supposed to uh, Hurricane Harvey, then it was a tropical storm. I think that the corporate media in general does a good job of covering the real time events you you know the stunning images and you know rescue efforts there's not a lot of talk about climate change for reasons i'm sure we could discuss another time um sure. for for the layman uh who might not be who might understand climate change but doesn't understand how it's making this particular storm and storms like it go from maybe you know flooding and damages to deadly can you kind of talk about how climate change is making uh, this storm worse? Sure. So, I mean, the important thing, you know, certainly one important thing to remember is we can't blame any particular storm on climate change. But the question really is, is how does climate change contribute to this particular storm? And the way to think about it is uh, the Gulf of Mexico since the 1950s has warmed up considerably. And so that's a warmer ocean surface. And that ocean surface temperature through evaporation is the energy that drives hurricanes. And that's a, that's a very nonlinear effect. And so a small change in ocean surface temperature leads to a very large change in evaporation of moisture. Mm -hmm. And so small changes associated with climate change can lead to large changes in evaporation, which is really the fuel that drives hurricanes. So what that can do is intensify the strongest hurricanes uh, due to that increase in uh, Gulf of Mexico temperatures. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular storm, you know, the, the reason it's so uh, damaging is, is because it's been so stationary. And so it's just been raining constantly in one place. The, not much climate change signal in that, but there, there probably is a climate change signal in the, in the fuel that supplies the hurricane. And also, you know, our atmosphere is warmer, so that means it's moister, can hold more water vapor, and that, but that also means when we have storms, they tend to rain out more water. And you were mentioning the surface temperature uh, yeah. of, of the water. Isn't the actual air temperature being warmer too, those two things mixing? Uh, Absolutely. So that's right. So you can have the ocean surface is warmer, which allows, their, allows for more, you know, larger evaporation. But the atmosphere can hold more moisture because it's warmer. And therefore, when the storm fully develops, it, it has a stronger, it has more fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be a stronger storm. Uh, but also, it's going to dump more rainfall because there's just more water in the atmosphere to, to ring out. Right. And I was reading earlier, uh, most of the times with these kinds of storms, to, when they're about to make landfall, uh, they typically, that is not the period where they're speeding up. But with this one, it did. Can you kind of explain that? Yeah, that's right. So this 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 storm, in terms of its intensity, uh, amplified uh, very late in the game. That's unusual. Usually, we see the storms amplify further out into the ocean, and then you know, so uh, the storm will amplify uh, very rapidly, intensify, reach sort of its peak amplitude, and then uh, decay as it comes into landfall. This storm amplified very close to the coast. Uh, right as it was coming into landfall, that's fairly unusual. And when you, when you're looking at uh, obviously the Paris Climate Change Accords, most right. experts said it didn't go far enough. But a lot of this has to do with warming and warming temperatures and warming uh, surface uh, temperature on the ocean. So right. if we don't do something about lowering uh, lowering the temperature, there's different standards. Some people think. Over a degree Celsius, some people think more. Uh, are, are we in for more more of this at, at even greater lengths? Well, the way I the way I think about it is, um, uh, if you think about uh, Harvey as sort of uh, maybe twenty five years ago, there was a, a one in a hundred chance of having a storm like Harvey, and maybe today there's a a, a one in uh, fifty or a one in thirty year chance of having uh, a Harvey. Uh, 
20 years from today, it could be a one in 10 chance of having a, a storm like Harvey. Uh, and all those kinds of scenarios that these multipliers of what's the probability of having a storm like Harvey uh, get smaller and smaller. The chances, you know, you get uh, larger and larger, you get larger and larger chance of having a storm like that. And so, you know, 50 years from now, if we don't do anything about the warming of the planet, you know, we might have a Harvey-like storm every year. Right. And I mean, it's, it's a little bit different, but you look at levees failing now yeah. in Houston. Uh, part of that's just we don't spend any money on infrastructure. And part of yeah. that is these cities were built uh, that weren't built expecting these kinds of uh, storms. That's right. Well, you know, most of the infrastructure, you know, in the past has assumed a, a stationary climate. That the you know that uh, the the rainfall that we had the past thirty years would look like the rainfall for the next thirty years. Uh, we're and you know that's certainly true where I am in Miami. You know when we think about sea level rise, all of our infrastructure to deal with uh, you know flooding here was all based on the notion that sea level wouldn't rise at all. But and so I'm sure the same kind of thinking went on in terms of the infrastructure in Houston. It was assuming that the climate is stationary, things aren't changing. And, you know, the amount of rainfall we've had in the last 30 years is going to tell us what's going to happen in the next 30 years. And that's been going on for 60, 70 years. And we know that's not true. The climate is changing. The amount of rainfall is changing. The temperatures are changing. And all of these things, sea levels rising, all of these things are really challenging our infrastructure. Now, I want to ask you, I mean, obviously, you don't have to give your political views, but I see in the in the coverage uh, terms like stunning and unprecedented and historic and yeah. kind of like, to me, it seems like who would have thought this would happen? And, you know, uh, it, right. it kind of emotes like this is very out of the ordinary, but it doesn't seem to be out of the ordinary. We're seeing storms like this, whether it's Sandy and other uh, smaller storms all the time. Do you think uh, in terms of coverage, the way we speak about it, uh, the, the media is missing something? Well, I, you know, I, uh, I think in, in some respects, maybe they are in the sense that uh, it's really important to remember that uh, that you know what we're seeing is um, more extreme extreme events, and we've started to you know we we saw that with Sandy, we saw that before Sandy, and we're seeing that extending again you know again with Harvey and other storms. We're seeing you know you you see that with droughts and floods that aren't tropical storm related. The, the extreme events that we we see seem to be getting more extreme, and that's that's something that I think. Uh, I would like to have uh, a more coverage of, more discussion, and how are we going to adapt to, to uh, an environment where we're starting to see more extreme extreme? So, you know, one of the one of the science, you know, one part of the science with hurricanes is we expect there that the bigger storms, the stronger storms, are going to be a bit stronger in a changing climate. We need to start thinking about that. What does that mean in terms of our infrastructure along our coastlines? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, droughts are going to be more persistent and more intense. What What are we going to do about that? Uh, tornado outbreaks. All of these things are likely to become more intense. These extreme events, and that's that's really important. And we're not we're not thinking about that. And uh, lastly, we talked about the surface water temperature and the air. Uh, what are what are the factors that are going into the storm creation um, in itself? Meaning, uh, maybe ten to twenty years ago, uh, the the winds weren't as strong, the the motion wasn't as strong, uh, but these storms seem to be picking up at, at a much greater uh, speed. Well, I think in terms of the uh, the, the climate change part of that, uh, what that perceived uh, acceleration, that is really coming from the ocean surface and okay. that, that the ocean surface is warmer and that's basically uh, priming the pump more, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, cliche or analogy you want to want to put in there, but it's putting, it's, uh, you have a warmer atmosphere, uh, uh, more fuel, and that basically makes that, that engine, that heat engine that's a, a hurricane more efficient and that therefore stronger. And uh, one more, you, you're in Miami, so obviously, right. I mean, you, if you read three stories on climate change in Miami, one says it's going to be underwater in 100 years, the next says it could be 15 years, you know. Uh, right. what, what is the state of Miami right now? What do you think needs to be done pretty quickly? Uh, well, you know, uh, if it looks like we're going to see another foot of sea level rise uh, by 2035, 2040. Uh, that's going to ser seriously challenge our infrastructure. Uh, we need to start to start making robust adaptation strategies. We need to think about um, 
uh, particularly uh, parts of uh, South Florida that we're going to return to its natural environment. We need to think in terms of what development we're going to do in terms of uh, locating, you know, new buildings and, and adapting uh, to uh, different kinds of transportation, more more uh, public transportation. And and honestly, you know, we're going to have to allow for uh, water to flow uh, more naturally the way it used to. And uh, we're going to have to do those things. And those are really hard decisions that require, you know, buy-in from the entire population. And we need to start thinking about those things now. Even though it's 25, 30 years away, uh, you got to start that process right away in order to adapt. So I'm, I'm confident because, uh, you know, the city of Miami Beach is being aggressive. Uh, we have new uh, uh, cabinet positions in the city and in the county that are really looking at resiliency. We have processes where we think about resilient redesign of certain components of the city, the face of the flooding. So South Florida is trying to do stuff. We just want to make sure the, that there's nothing that's getting in the way for that innovation to go forward, uh, that there's nothing happening at the federal level or the state level that stops these local governments from being effective and responding to the pressures of sea level rise. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Ben Kurtman, uh, atmospheric scientist at University of Miami. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Have a good one.